Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. This is the Sunday Sermon, and guess what? I have nothing prepared. Zero, the big fat, not a zip, zilch, nothing. That was great, wasn't it? Why would I do absolutely nothing to prepare for my Sunday Sermon, you may ask? Well, I generally don't prepare anything. <laughs> Generally, something comes up during the week. I have a conversation with someone. Um, I hear something on the news, mostly YouTube news, for that matter. Sometimes I'll hear something from the news, like at my workplace, where it's actual news, not just YouTube-related stuff. And, yeah, this week just absolutely nothing came to mind. I'm still reading the Bible every day and still spending time with the Lord every day and try to give Him ample opportunity to speak to me and to hear from him, and while he has definitely spoken into my life this week, and I'm continually trying to draw closer to him, and learn more about him, and try to be more like Jesus, this particular week, uh, just nothing, I guess, uh, I, w I wouldn't say it's not noteworthy, but it's not something that I would make a 30 minute sermon on, so I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Okay, I've wasted about a minute and a half, good, let's keep that up. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so bad. But what I thought I would do was simply talk to you guys for a little bit. I have 30 minutes. I can ramble as much as I want. It's great. I don't have to limit myself to three or four minutes. Not that I do that very successfully anyway. Have you guys noticed that the last several preaching videos of like this week and possibly last week, maybe in the week before that, I've been running like between four and seven minutes per daily video, and it's like, what? I could probably take a single video just off of whatever I'm reading in the book of Samuel, right now in 2 Samuel, probably make an entire sermon off of that chapter. There's so much good stuff in there. Ugh. I, can, I can only keep encouraging you guys, please read the book of Samuel. It is chock full of so much good content. You want drama, you want romance, you want a sh struggle over, you know, a kingdom and power struggles and conflict and, you know, da dashing a little bit of death and murder and you got the book of Samuel. It's great. You want, you want all that juicy stuff. You want these nice little tidbits. And let's throw in a very heavy dash of reality, because this is history. This stuff actually happened. King David was a literal historical figure. And you've got it. It's right there. Excuse me. Huh. A little late. But, yeah, please check it out. But at the same time, I was like, you know what? Even though I love what I'm reading, even though I could probably cobble something together, I mean, putting a, putting a sermon together, since I'm in the Bible every day, that's one of the reasons my talks last as long as they do. There's a lot of good stuff that I've been reading, and two, I tend to be very, very rambly. Um, some could call it a silver tongue. That sounds so manipulative, though. That sounds so bad. Let's not call it that for me, okay? Don't you put that in the comments. Don't you dare put that in the comments. I would think of it more as like the gift of gab or just the gift of speaking. Or, as Mark Senpai would reply, it's the gift of rambling. It's the gift of just talking. And talking, and more talking. See, there's about four minutes right there of me not having really gone into anything. Just talking with you guys. But that's what I decided to do. I was like, you know what? Since nothing in particular just strikes me as, nothing's popped out at me this week in my personal life or in my news. Um, nothing overly dramatic. Nothing incredibly super duper important. I was like, you know what? Let me just talk to them about me. I'm just going to spend about 30-ish minutes with you guys. There's still going to be a salvation message at the end. It is Sunday. That's something that's very important to me. And so I was like, you know, let me just talk about, like, why I'm doing YouTube, what I do in life, and, you, and, you know, just a little bit about where I come from and what's my background. So without getting too incredibly super-duper personal, there are a few details I'm probably not going to go into. Please forgive me for that. Like, you know, mother's maiden name, social security number, bank account. I'm probably going to stay away from those things, so sorry if you're looking to dox me. Uh, I'm not going to give you a video with everything you need. That's not going to happen. Okay, almost at five minutes. Good. Keep on pushing. <laughs> 
That's so bad. Well, I have told you guys, my name is Brandon, and started this YouTube channel. My gosh, it is August. I started in April, April, May, June, July. I'm going on my fifth month. That's so crazy. And I've been doing, I'm very proud to say I've been putting up YouTube videos two every single day. One which is preachy, sermon oriented. Um, and on Sundays, it's not just like a quick little blurb out of whatever I'm reading or whatever topic has crossed my mind. But on Sundays, it's a full 30 minute like sermon, an actual message. That way, that allows me maximum ramble time, maximum get stuff out of my head, through my mouth, out into the world time, and I love Sundays for that. And also one video game video every single day. Not sure what video game video I'm going to put up for today. But, that being said, um, you know, if I'll figure out something. I've got, I've got stuff backlogged on my computer, so I can definitely type in a little something. something like, okay, what do I want to put up here? I want to post some more Toho stuff, some more classic Nintendo stuff. You know, maybe another League of Legends video, you know, blah, 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 blah. or maybe something completely unoriginal and new. Um, that's probably not going to happen. But, so, and I'm very pleased to say that I have been doing YouTube very continuously, very regularly. I, I missed one day by accident, and I put up like an apology video like, hey, I completely goofed up today. It completely messed up. So, other than that one day, yeah. Two videos every single day. And I said this in a previous video, or actually, I don't think it's previous to y'all yet. I think that's still somewhere in my backlog. So I'll say it here. Take up a little bit more time, and that joke is going to keep on coming back. But, <clears throat> but, yeah, and I just completely lost my train of thought. Good job. And I wasn't planning on editing this either. Great! I'm so ready to take up a regular pulpit on a Sunday message. Let me just embarrass myself in a live audience. That'll be great. Then I can actually watch them and hear them laugh at me. That'll be fantastic. But, um, been putting up videos regularly and that's been... It's been a very unique experience for me because... My primary, it's so weird, like, the biggest thing that I've wanted to do with most of my life is talk to people about Jesus, talk to people about how he can save them, about how all the bad things you've done can be forgiven, and that horrible place of fire called hell, you get to skip out on that, that's not what God's purpose for you was, you get to go to heaven and be with him forever, all you've got to do is believe in his son Jesus, and it fixes you on the inside, and it prepares you for literally forever. And I've always wanted to do that. And for whatever reason, God did not release me to do ministry immediately upon release from college. Uh, a little bit of backstory, I guess, is where I get to talk about me. So, first off, I'm really, really freaking old. I'm actually going to be turning 36 this month. My birthday is August the 26th. 1980, so I'll be 36 at the end of this month. Upper 30s. I'm old. <laughs> and I'm starting YouTube old. That's so unusual and very different from what most YouTubers do. Especially anyone who wants to make this a career or something that they make a regular income off of, which would be great if that somehow one day happened. I'm gonna, And I want to keep working hard and pushing towards that goal. But... I really primarily wanted a way to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. And only recently have I felt the Lord leading me into doing like more ministry stuff at my church, actually put myself out there, try, you know, meeting with people, talking with people, doing things at my church. And it's really interesting that that didn't happen right out of high school. A little bit more about my backstory. Um, I was raised in a secular household. Didn't really have anything to do with God or Jesus or anything. Then at the age of 13, my mom's like, let's go to church. And I'm like, cool, I'm going to you know, put off homework for a little bit this Sunday. And that church was my first experience in a long time of just a little bit of a little bit of joy, a little bit of peace, a little bit of love. Those weren't emotions I honestly was used to because it's not that my mom didn't love me. I was just really angry and bitter inside. 13 years old, I'm this angry little ball of meh. 
just I was a nasty little bugger too. I was like, I even cut. I was. Yeah, I'll say, put let's put this into perspective. I was raised by my mom alone. There wasn't a father in the background. He cheated on her um, and became a drunker around the time I was two and a half. So my mom was like, nope, not doing that. Um, he raised his fist to her once, and she was like, uh-uh, that's it, I'm done. So she raised me as a single parent, so there's no dad in the background at the age of... 13, I start cussing my mom and raising my fist to her because I don't know what else to do with all the anger and upsetness and emotion that's bottled up inside of me. And if, as it turns out, if I hadn't accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior at the age of 13 and some immediate mental and emotional improvements hadn't kicked in, which I completely credit to him, as it turns out, she would have sent me to a juvenile detention center because she's like, I didn't put up with it from my husband. I'm not putting up with it for my son, no matter how much I love you. So, 13, that changed the ball game for me. I became a Christian. I found out, like, a good reason to live, a reason to live a righteous, good, healthy life. Because with God, those things are important. You actually want to do those things. You have motivation to do those things. And I remember, I think it was at the age of 16-ish, I felt like, you know, I should like do ministry stuff. I should talk to people about Jesus. I should make that my full time job. So I got out of high school. I did well. I did well enough in my class. I actually did graduate with honors. I didn't have a 4.0 GPA or above, but I did graduate with honors. I want to say it was 3.6 back in high school. That's respectable. It's not bad. And but I still didn't put forth like a really. Hey, I'm so sorry for yelling so much. Gee whiz, should stop making these videos so late at night. But I just wanted to go out and, like, I don't know, become a youth pastor or something and just get my, get my foot in the door at some church somewhere and start talking to people about Jesus. So the first thing I did out of high school was go to college. And I remember me and Mom got in this big um, argument. We were both Christians at the time. And there was no cussing or fist raising or nothing stupid on my part like that. And I was just like, I need to go to college. What was, my, what was my argument back then? Like, you know, from what I hear, Jesus called all of his disciples really, really young. And actually, if you look it up, there is a possibility that the 12 apostles, that a fair number of them were teenagers. Like, I forget the exact ages that have been theorized. I think like late teens or something. But teenagers, just, you know, just barely getting into the world, getting their lives started. And Jesus is like, yep, you're going to quit being a tax collector. You're going to quit being a fisherman. You're going to come up and follow me. I'm just going to keep on going. Good grief. Yeah, sorry, guys. Sorry for being tired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, I can't really apologize for that because there's nothing I can do about that. It is what it is. But I could have recorded earlier on the day or something like that. So for what... For whatever reason, just because I feel like it, I apologize for all the yawning that I've done and will do. So I was like, you know, I have the Word of God. I got the Holy Spirit inside me. I don't need no college. I'm just going to go straight to a church. And I'm going to go straight to the door. And I'm going to be like, I'm anointed of God. I'm called by God. Let me preach at your church. And, you know, eventually one of the churches is going to realize, hey, this guy's called by God. This guy should be a, pa a youth pastor or associate pastor or some kind of pastor. We're going to pick him up. And mom was like, no, you're going to go to college because pretty much every pastor in existence has gone to college. Not all, but the vast majority of them. I was going to a Southern Baptist church at the time and definitely mainline denominational churches. Hey, go ahead. They want you to go to college. And I was like, no, I don't need to. No, I don't need to. And eventually... The Lord himself was like, son, you need to go to college. That your mom's right on that. So I was like, okay. So disappointed. I was like, I'm <laughs> God knows I how anointed I am. Why isn't why isn't he letting me go out and do this thing? And I went to college, I went to a local little Christian college. It's not even open anymore, actually. It doesn't even exist anymore. And kinda of di disappointed me a little bit because I like the people, I like the staff. I didn't learn a whole, whole lot there. Um, one of the... This is going to sound incredibly arrogant. And, I did, and since I don't know how else to say it, I'm just going to go ahead and sound like a complete jerk with this. 
I'm a fairly smart guy, and I study quite a bit on my own. I don't know Hebrew or Greek thoroughly, but like, yeah, reading the Bible, constantly reading a lot of books on the Bible, um, learning the characters of the Bible. That's something I did throughout my teenage years. And by the time I was 18, huh, I don't think I'd read the entire Bible yet, but I'd read a good, good chunk of it. And I'd read a lot of books studying it, um, dissecting it. I knew that the original three languages were Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. Hebrew and Aramaic for the Old Testament. Primarily Hebrew, Aramaic, just in a few little spots here and there. And Greek for the New Testament. I knew the times that the books were relatively written. I'd heard the, th the theories about you know, who wrote them and why they were written at the time that they were written. So college itself, like Old Testament and New Testament classes, I was like, yeah, I know that. But can we, can we move along a little bit? And I, uh, when it came to theology, I was like, yep, know that, yep, know that. Church history, Nicene Creed, Athanasian Creed, yep, know that. Again, I'm not trying to be this arrogant little prick. And I realized that I wasn't, probably still am not, nearly as known as I thought I was back in the day. But I do do my research. I do my homework. I try to study to show myself approved. Hopefully, and I'd say the best judge of those things, check out my warning conservative Christian coming out videos. Good golly. I, did. I don't feel incredibly tired. I, maybe I'm yawning because one, um, one thing you probably, guys probably didn't know, I am asthmatic. So I take care of a little inhaler with me at all times. And I do some on regular medicine during the morning and during the night. And maybe, I don't know, maybe just because it's summer and it's humid where I live. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'm deprived of oxygen or something because I'm talking so much or I'm talking too loud or I'm talking too fast. I don't know. I'm like, I don't feel, it, it, it is a bit late at night, but I don't feel like incredibly tired, like, oh my gosh, let me just pass out. So, I'm guessing asthma is probably the reason I'm yawning so much, so just please forgive me. <laughs> As I yawn through this entire video, it uses up more seconds anyway. That's a good thing. I'm really good at this happening. <laughs> so, I, I studied quite a bit. The college didn't teach me an incredibly large amount, and I didn't opt for the Hebrew or Greek classes. Now, that would have taught me quite a bit. I know a few Hebrew words and a few Greek words. I didn't study the languages in depth or thoroughly. That would have been brand new and fresh stuff, but as far as theology, as far as where like the theology is based in the Bible, I knew that stuff. Basic church history, knew that stuff. What happened as far as... <sighs> As far as the church being Catholic up until around the 1500s, then Martin Luther and several other reformers breaking it off in the 1500s, starting the Protestant Reformation, and then the Pentecostal and Charismatic movements, which happened in the early 20th and early 20th century for the Pentecostal movement and like the 1960s for the Charismatic movement. I like knew all this stuff coming out of high school, and I didn't really, I didn't devote myself. Um, I went through a period of time where I determined that all movies and video games were evil, so I would not partake of any of those things whatsoever. <laughs> That's known as legalism, by the way, um, or Phariseeism, if you're not familiar with those terms. To turn away from every single thing that could be fun or pleasurable in the world, <sighs> That's not. that's not godliness, that's not... It doesn't give you an in with God. It's just usually it's you adding a bunch of rules that the Bible didn't um, doesn't have to begin with. Um, quick segue. That's one of the reasons that in my video game videos I use a lot of profanity, cursing, or foul language because I simply don't believe that the American church has got that particular doctrine right. I don't believe using those words are sins. So I use them freely in my personal life. I use them freely on my YouTube channel. And we'll continue to do so. Um, I went through a period where I thought cursing was absolutely horrible and terrible. And I got rid of like pretty much my entire movie collection because they all had at least one bad word in them. I wasn't going to have any of that. And, you know, how much more? Definitely, you know, stay away from, you know, all the provocative stuff and the drinking scenes and just 
you know, just all this horrible stuff that Hollywood has offered. Just nope, none of that. And so, and I also got rid of video games because I felt like um, I made video games like an idol before God. So I didn't want that idol to take his place, and I felt like I was in sin. So I threw away my, <laughs> at the time, oh, I laugh at how dumb this was now. I don't regret doing this, and I'll get to that in a minute. Yeah, I threw away my entire Nintendo and Super Nintendo collection at the time. And I skipped out on the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1. Again, remember, I'm old. So the regular Nintendo, that was my first video game entertainment system. Super Mario Bros. was the first game on, a, on home console that I played. The original Super Mario Bros. back in the... Um, no, this was the mid-80s, like 86, 87, maybe 88. So, yeah, I played, I, I, that was my original stuff. So, by the time the Nintendo 64 and PlayStation 1 and that generation came out, I was just like, nope. <sighs> I'm living for God, I'm not doing any of that stuff. So, I devoted, I had a lot of free time. And so, that free time went into studying and to reading and to prayer. I can honestly say I don't regret any of that. While obviously, you look at my channel, obviously I don't believe that anymore. And I don't think any of that was correct. And I don't think staying away from video games or abstaining from video games will get me closer to God. I don't believe that's the case at all. I believe a heart that is sanctified before Him and that's hallowed before Him, um, that's what gets you close to God. If you believe in Jesus, the deal is done, the deal is sealed, you're going to heaven. You have a personal relationship with him, and at that point, you simply got to seek him. God's not anti-fun, um, and I don't even believe he's anti-profanity. Um, if I call someone a jerk or fill in the blank, um, I don't use that language during my preaching videos because I'm aware that Christians will primarily watch these videos more than anything else, so for their sake, I don't use language in these videos. Um, I don't use language around, video, around people in my personal life that disapprove of it just because I want to be respectful of them. Um, I want to show as much Christian love as I can to them, and I certainly don't want to trip anyone up or provoke anyone to sin if they think it is sinful. So I try to stay away from that, from those people that think it's inappropriate. And since a lot of Christians genuinely believe that that's bad, I stay away from them in the preaching videos. That way, that way they can listen to these videos. That way they won't find anything offensive or bad or terrible with these videos. And I would simply tell people who think you know, cursing is wrong, particularly for a Christian, particularly for someone who is who has ministry as an eventual goal, just stay away from my video game videos. Um, stick to the preaching ones. Stick to these videos right here. And I went through a period of, oh my gosh, I went through a period of like over 10 years where like even the biblical cuss words like, you know, well, hell, for example, or damned, like you're, you, when, you're, when you go to hell, that's referred to as damnation or you are damned. Um, I didn't use those, even those words out of proper context. Like the light, the white, or the soft core profanity. I didn't even use those for over 10 years. So I definitely can choose not to curse. I just don't think there's anything wrong with it at this point. I don't see any reason not to. It's a part of the English language. A lot of those words are a lot more uh, accepted than they used to be. And they're very accepted in the YouTube culture and environment. So I was like, you know, it's a part of pretty much every video gaming video out there. I don't see a problem with it. Why not go for it? So there's, in the middle of this video of getting to know me, there's an explanation of why I curse in the middle of my videos. And as far as ministry goes, good gosh, 24 minutes. I wish... Now I kind of wish I could take back those five minutes that I was postponing at the beginning of this 30 minutes and take back all the yawns, take back all that crap so I could talk to you guys some more. Um, if, you like this, if you like this video and you want to get to know me a little bit more, I don't know, just like leave a like on the video and let me know. Just like type in the comments and say, hey, this was kind of cool. I actually might have listened to more of this than I would in most of your other preaching sermons. So just let me know in the comments if you want a little bit more of this because, good gosh, time flies when you're having fun and i love talking to you guys and i like talk i won't deny i like talking about myself and talking about the things that uh 
the things that are important to me and the thing like where I came from and how I feel about stuff. It's one of the biggest reasons I did this YouTube channel because I want to tell people about Jesus and I just want to I want to have some fun with you guys. I want to have some fun with the community, my fellow nerds and geeks and weeaboos and otakus and all these people. All these people that I, I and of course, of course, my fellow Christians. I want to have fun with all you guys. I want to have discussions with all you guys. I want to spend time with all you guys. I want to make a difference in this world. I want to make my time down here count. And as to why God didn't immediately release me into ministry and release me into um, into you know just the into the church itself as a pastor of some kind. Well, since I walked away from him and didn't really live for, for him for. Well, at least not wholeheartedly, not with everything that's in me for about seven years. That's probably a pretty good reason not to do it. And I can get into more of that in a future video if you want me to. Again, just leave a like on this video, type some in the comments below. I, I guess that's typing. It kind of looks like typing to me. So, yeah, just let me know, and maybe I, we can do this a little bit more at some point in the future. As of right now, we've got about four-ish minutes left in the video, so what I want to do is give you guys the reason. And if you're not a Christian, don't click away yet. Just give me another minute. Just give me one more minute. If you really don't want to, if you don't want to become a Christian at the end of this minute, then that's fine. Click away. But just give me a little bit more of your time. Just, just a skosh. Like I was really miserable before I became a Christian, and being a Christian is what answered this heart cry in me that. There's got to be more to existence and life than this. There's got to be something outside of this world. There's got to be more to it than just everything that's before my eyes and everything that I see in here because a lot of stuff down here is really miserable and horrible. And a lot of stuff down here is still pretty miserable and horrible even as a Christian, but now I know I have the answer to a lot of those problems and a lot of those things that are wrong in the world. And I also have an answer to what's going to happen to me when I die. I have an answer for what's outside of this world, and that's God and heaven and Jesus. A lot of good stuff awaits those who will accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior, including just knowing that all the crap that you've done is water under the bridge. Even if man won't give you that, like, that forgiveness card, he won't give you that pass, God will. He loves you. He'll give you a second chance. This hasn't been a very preachy video, but... If, some, if, if the Lord's just pulling on your heart right now, if you've known for a while that you needed Jesus, or if maybe even just the one little minute, thank you guys. If you just really don't want to hear, if, if you don't want to pray a prayer with me, you can click off the video at this point. Thank you for watching up to this point. But if you want to pray a prayer to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're at a point where you're convinced, you know, I really do need Jesus. I really do need him in my heart right now. If something I've said or just what's going on in life right now has convicted you of that, just tell Jesus that you believe in him. That you believe he came to this world, died on the cross for you, and then rose again. That's all you need to do. Believe that. And if you want um, some words more specifically to put that in, let me lead you in a model prayer. Pray with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit that I'm a sinner. I admit that I've done things that are wrong. And I admit I need your help. Lord Jesus, please forgive me for the things that I've done wrong. I believe you died on the cross and shed your blood so that I can be forgiven of these things. And I believe you rose from the dead three days later and that you're alive right now and that you hear me. And I believe you have heard this prayer and I thank you. Thank you so much for letting me believe in you, for letting me be a Christian for promising me eternal life and forgiving me for all the things I've done wrong. Thank you so much, Jesus. Amen. And if you did pray that prayer, that means you are a believer, you're a Christian, you're a child of God, a child of the King, and welcome to the family. It's awesome. It, I, and that's the biggest thing for me. Like, what I really want to do with this channel and even to a degree with the video game videos, yeah, I want to have fun with them. And yeah, I want to have a good time and a blast. But what I really want to do is I want to attract attention to Jesus. 
It's in the name of my title, Jesus Freaking Gamer. I want to bring people's attention to Jesus, who can save them, who can get them out of the mess that they're in, who has an answer to their life's problems. If you just accept him as Lord and Savior, that means I did my job right. And if you watch this whole video and you decide not to click away just because it's like, oh, I can weather a prayer, that's fine with me. E even if you simply heard me and you didn't believe in Jesus yourself, I, I don't hate you. God doesn't either. I still love you. God still loves you. And, you know, you can come to him at any time you want. And thank you for sharing part of your day with me. My biggest thing with this channel is I want to tell people about Jesus and the video games and stuff. It's kind of like I hope people will almost stumble onto my preaching videos as they like look over my channel, as they look over my content, and that they'll just give the, uh, the Bible and God and Jesus, give them another chance. Because so many people are turned off by mainstream church culture and what's going on in the church today. And I just want to be completely open and honest with people and let people know who I am. I'm a real person. You know, I do use plenty of foul language in the video game videos. So I'm, 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 I'm a very real person. I try to be transparent on my YouTube channel. I would dare to say I'm pretty much as real as it gets. You're not going to meet a much more real, much more brutally honest person than me. Again, just uh, I'll link uh, this video. I'll link uh, the uh, warning Christian conservative coming out message um, with this video because I'm just very blunt. I'm very to the point. By the way, quick warning. If you have a weak stomach and you don't want to talk about very sensitive subjects, some of them, like, I'll just I'll go ahead and list the big, like, literally, no joking, triggering one, pedophilia. If, if you have a stomach and you can watch that stuff, then I couldn't recommend the series more because it's me just being who I am, explaining um, where I stand on several positions with a friend of mine who is not a Christian. His name is Robbie, and I play Dark Souls with him. Maybe I'll leave a link to that in the video description as well. Uh, I love, I've actually made that one playlist at this point. I need to make more playlists and be a more responsible YouTuber. But And all of that, after all of that, to say if you did accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, that's really, really awesome. Like right now, I want to make you the focus. That's so awesome. You don't have to like throw away all your movies and all your video games and just like, you know, nose to the grind and read the Bible. But if you would read the Bible just a little bit every single day, like a chapter a day or even half a chapter a day, that's really awesome. That'll get your relationship with God jump-started. It'll get you knowing like who He is and what He's about. Um, find a church. Find some people that believe the same thing as you, that believe that Jesus is God, that He died on the cross for their sins, that He rose again three days later. When you find people of like faith and mind, it's really encouraging, it's really comforting. And if you're doing wrong, it can be kind of rebuking as well, which is also good, because that keeps you on the path of life. And also, make sure to pray just a little bit to Him every day. Just uh, so you know, God, get me to work safe. God, help me to love my spouse a little bit more. God, help me to show my kids, you know, how I've changed, how I'm a Christian now. Help me to show them that I'm not that person I was before. You know, something as simple as that, don't have to be, it can be as specific as you want, but even something as simple as what I just said are legitimate prayers. Make sure you shoot up a few of those every day because God hears those prayers and He cares about you and your life and what you're going through. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.